Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. So first video of 2021 and I hope you're all getting inspired to get lots of painting done this year. So in this video I'm going to show you a seascape painting that I did recently and I'm going to focus on how we can create colour harmony in a painting. So this is where all our colours just look really nice and natural and that they're working with each other and you may be looking at it going wow this just really works and you're not even sure why. And this is when your painting is reading well to the viewer and it's because we're creating that colour harmony. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Anyway, let's just get straight into the video, grab your paintbrushes and let's roll the tape. This painting is inspired by a place called Horton Bay in Wellington, New Zealand. I used to live in Wellington so I got lots of photo reference when I lived there. And it's just got some great subjects for seascape paintings. I'm painting on a 10 inch by 12 inch linen panel. It's a medium weave oil primed linen that's glued to Baltic birch and they're pre-made by a company in the USA called canvaspanels.com. Now in this video I'm going to focus mainly on creating colour harmony within a seascape painting. But actually this applies to any painting really. So as I sketch out the composition here, I'll just go over the colours that I used in this painting, which includes titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, but you could also use yellow ochre instead, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, quinacridone crimson, but you could use alizarin crimson instead, ultramarine blue, and phthalo green. Now it's my belief that you can paint any landscapes with these colours and I generally keep my colour palette relatively simple these days. And this is one of the ways I achieve colour harmony in my paintings. Well at least I try to anyway. So I'm sketching out the composition here with a number one round brush and burnt sienna mixed with liquin and as I'm using oil paints the liquin's going to speed up the drying time and improve the flow of the paint. Now for any of you that have been watching my videos for a while might notice that I often used to tone the surface of my canvas with burnt sienna or burnt umber which helps to warm up the painting. But just recently in my last couple of videos you'll see that I've been painting on just a normal white canvas. Well the reason for this is I'm always constantly evolving as an artist and I like trying new things and I've been painting on a toned surface for quite a few years now. So I thought I'd just go back to see what it's like just painting on a normal white canvas and I've actually been really enjoying it, especially these linen panels because I just love the oil primed surface. But for me I've actually been finding that painting on a white surface has resulted in my colours looking a lot cleaner than when I used a burnt sienna surface. Now that's not to say that I'm never going to paint on a toned canvas again, I definitely will but for now I'm just enjoying painting on these linen panels just as they are. Now whenever I start a painting the first thing I think about in the landscape are the values and values are how light or dark a subject is and I feel that this is more important than the colours especially to begin with. So here I'm starting off with the main areas of shadows and the darkest values so that's the shadows in the clouds and the shadows in the rocks so these are the main shadows within the painting. I'm starting off with the sky which is a mix of ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna, a little bit of quinacridone crimson and titanium white. Now I'm actually able to use the white of the canvas to gauge the value of the clouds and I found that actually this is making it easier. Once I've painted those cloud shadows I then move on to the rock shadows and these are some of the darkest values in the landscape and here I'm using the same colours that I used in the clouds, a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and quinacridone crimson but much less titanium white. I then paint these shadows in the white water which is a mix of ultramarine blue, a tiny amount of burnt sienna, a little bit of quinacridone crimson and titanium white. And then the darkest values in the painting which are the shadows in the vegetation on the headland there and that's just a mix of ultramarine blue and a little bit of yellow oxide. Now as I've made the main subject of this video about colour harmony, let's just talk about that. So how can we do this? 
Well, the way to do it is to tie in all the zones in your painting together so that they look harmonious. You should be able to just look at a painting and just go, yeah, that looks really nice. Those colors are working. You may not know why, but you'll just look at it and know that it looks good. Now I've found that with my own artworks, especially in the past when I was using loads of colors, it actually used to make my paintings just look awful, to be honest. I'd have all different zones in my painting that looked like they didn't fit together and some just really gnarly looking colors and the whole thing just looking out of balance. Now one of the mistakes I was making was that I was just using so many colors and it was actually just over complicating the whole thing. So I found that when I started simplifying my palette, not only did my color skills and color mixing skills start improving, but my paintings just started looking much cleaner and much nicer. It was also taking the confusion out of it as well. So the way we can create color harmony is to use common colors throughout the painting. And this ties all the zones together. So if we just look at the shadows that I've just marked in so far, they all contain a common color, which is ultramarine blue. I've also used burnt sienna and quinacridone crimson and titanium white in most of those color mixes as well. So next I'm going to start marking in the areas in light that are on the cliffs. So this is the cliff faces and the rocks and for this I'm using yellow oxide with some burnt sienna, titanium white and a little bit of ultramarine blue which is just going to desaturate the color especially when combined with the yellow oxide and burnt sienna. I'm able to use these same color combinations for the rocks as well. I mix them up and vary the amounts a little bit so I get some different colors, but they're all tethered to the same color mix. Now, of course, I've been using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna in most of the other areas of the painting, and then the yellow oxide I was using in the shadows for the vegetation as well. So this is already tying these zones together. So I move on to the areas of the vegetation that's in the full sunlight. So how can I tie this zone together with the rest of the painting? Well, I'm starting off with ultramarine blue and then I mix in some yellow oxide and some titanium white. Although I don't need a lot of titanium white because trees and shrubs are quite dark in value anyway. I then increase the saturation by mixing in some cadmium yellow and just harmonize the green a little bit with some cadmium orange. I can also shift the hue of that green to a more emerald green by mixing in a little bit of phthalo green. Next, when I come to block in the sea, I want to keep some common relationships in the colour with the rest of the painting. So I use ultramarine blue with some yellow oxide and some titanium white. And these are the same colours that I've been using in the vegetation in the cliffs. So that ties those two zones together. For some of those lighter areas in the troughs, I can just mix in a little bit of titanium white into the mix. The water that's just washed onto the surface of the sand after the waves have just collapsed is a mix of ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna, some quinacridone crimson and titanium white. And these are the same colours that I used in the rock shadows and the clouds. So that ties that together. And then the sand which I come to paint is quite dark and it's also in shadow and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with yellow oxide, burnt sienna and a little bit of titanium white. And I've used these same colours in the rocks and I've also been using these colours in the vegetation as well. Now when I'm blocking in a painting and I get to a point where I can see it's all coming together nicely, I then start going back over the whole painting and just restating the dark values and just tidying up the areas and generally preparing it so that when I come to start adding detail once it's dry, it's going to be easier to just layer details on top of the underlayers that I've just painted. Now I'm someone that doesn't like to go overly detailed with my paintings as well, so I do like those initial layers to show through. I'm sort of trying to find a balance between loose gestural brush marks and perhaps a little bit of impressionism with a bit of detail. I paint those dark rocks in the foreground with a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Again, I've used these colors in the rocks. And then following that, there's just a couple more zones in the painting which I need to work on, which I haven't started yet. The first one is the sky, and this is very light in value, especially as it's evening as well, and the sun is low in the sky. 
This is a simple mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white. And again, this ties in with the rest of the painting because I've been using these colors pretty much throughout. I paint the soft highlights on the areas of the breaking wave and the white water by using a mix of titanium white with a little bit of burnt sienna. I just want to give the water a soft glow to it. I also allow some of the shadow mix to mix in with it as well so that it's a bit darker in value and then that way later on in the painting when I layer on some lighter values it's going to make the whole thing look more three dimensional. Now I'm getting close to having the painting blocked in and it's already looking pretty good so far. If it wasn't for the fact that this painting was actually a commission I'd definitely put it on my website. Now if you're an artist or creative and you're looking to make your own website then check out portfoliobox.net. It's an online website builder where you can create your own beautiful website to showcase your art to the highest standard. And right now Portfolio Box are offering a 50% discount on any of their plans for the first year by typing in the discount code SAMERP50 and I've put the link and the discount code in the description box below. So as I say, check that out, portfoliobox.net. It's really easy to use. They've got loads of styles and templates and the whole thing works through drag and drop. So you don't even need to know any coding. But as I say, I've put the link and the discount code in the description box below. So now that my painting's blocked in, I'm gonna leave it for a couple of days to dry and then begin adding some details to it. Now when it came to adding more details to this painting, I didn't do anything too much different with the colour mixes. They were pretty much the same colour mixes that I used during the blocking in stage. But this time I was just keeping in mind that I'm going to be building up lighter layers and this is going to help build up the three dimensional form in the painting until I'm saving my lightest values until the very end. These are things like final highlights I'll make to the waves and white water where I'll be using my lightest tones. But if you look at the painting as it's coming together, you'll see how all the colors work with each other because I've been tying in the same colors throughout all the zones within the painting. So they've all got something in common with each other. Now, of course there are exceptions and it's not always possible to use the exact same colors in every zone of the painting. But if you can, I'll try and keep those common relationships within each zone of the painting. And this is where using fewer colors helps because it forces you to use those existing colors that you already have. Now, another way you can improve the color harmony in your paintings is by clicking that like button and subscribing to my channel for more videos. Also, check out my website at samuelerp.com where I've got loads of free painting resources on there, including written painting tutorials and reference photos. And I've also got some full length painting tutorial videos available as well, including a full length version of this video which is available as an individual video from my website. Or if you subscribe to me on Patreon, this video is part of the monthly video subscription. So I've put all the links in the description box below, so check those out. Now as I finish up this painting, one of the last things I like to do with my seascape paintings is add a couple of seagulls in there. I always think it looks pretty cool and it just adds a bit of life to the painting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspires you to paint some seascapes. Please feel free to leave me a comment if you've got any questions in the comment section below. I hope you're having a beautiful day, happy painting, and I shall see you in the next video.